As an artist, do you ever hear a beat online and you think, wow, this beat is perfect, except for maybe the intro is too long or the beat is a little bit too slow, maybe you want it faster, uh, or maybe the pitch, right? Maybe you want the pitch to be a little bit higher or lower. So today I'm gonna talk to you about some of the benefits of why you should consider editing. And then I'm gonna actually get in there and show you some of the edits myself in case you wanna learn how to do it. So when I started working with some of the bigger artists like Russ or Blacha, um, these guys that get millions and millions of views to their songs, what I noticed is that they would take my beats or take my parts and they would adjust them, changing the key a little bit, adding certain sounds, and this allowed them certain benefits that I wasn't able to understand before I experienced this. So today, let's get into some of the benefits that you can get from editing songs, and then I'll show you how to do it. So one of the first benefits is just having a more unique sound. So adjusting the song, adjusting the pitch, tempo, or key can really make it sound even a little bit more different. Just give you a little bit more of a unique edge, a unique sound. The second benefit is services like Shazam. Shazam is an app that, that people have on their phone where they can listen to a song or, and yeah, when they're listening to a song, they can press the button and it will tell them what song it is. Now, if you're using a beat online and the beat has not been edited to any degree, there is a chance that when people are trying to Shazam your song and find you, they may find another artist. They may find the producer. So making little changes to the sound recording increases the likelihood of Shazam and these audio recognition services being able to determine that that is in fact your song. So that's going to increase your views, increase your momentum as well. And then another benefit of editing beats, again, adjusting the tempo, little adjustments, potentially adding things, uh, is the content ID. Now this is a little bit tricky and arguable because generally as artists, you're not allowed to claim content ID unless it's an exclusive owned beat. But the benefits are twofold. Even if you're not claiming content ID, non-exclusive, you shouldn't be claiming content ID. There's still a benefit of editing the song and that benefit would be that you're going to likely run into less copyright claims. You know, any artist that leases a beat online, at some point you're probably going to run into a copyright claim on YouTube or something, which is not a big deal. You could easily copyright claim or you could easily counterclaim those. But by adjusting the sound a little bit, there is a much smaller chance that you're going to run into those copyright claims from other artists as your sound is a little bit different. Now, arguably you can, if you edit the beat enough, you can actually get away with claiming the content ID because as long as your final product isn't detectable to sound like the producer's beat or other artists that are using the beat, you could arguably get away with that. Now, don't take that as legal advice because I noticed that a lot of producers are being told now to do DMCA takedown claims for people that are taking their sounds. Uh, so if you do this wrong, you could potentially get your song taken down. So if you're doing non-exclusive, I would edit and just look at that first benefit of dealing with less copyright claims and less um, stuff like that. So those are some of the benefits. You get a more unique sound. Uh, services like Shazam are going to be able to easily detect your song and direct traffic to you and then less content ID issues and even the potential ability if edited enough to be able to claim content ID for your song obviously at your own risk and if you purchase a beat in the next week I can do any of these edits for you whether it's wave or also track stems and if you want to get on the phone and talk business, maybe you want some help with promotion or you want to pick my brain on what you should do next, I'll do that for you as well. So simply pick up a beat, let me know by email or hit me up and yeah, we'll get started right away. So let me know if you got any questions and let's get right into it. So if you want to get started editing and recording a song right away, I recommend to head over to ryanybeats.com and you could download any of the beats available at the beat store. 
by clicking on this little download icon. So what I'll do is I'll download this beat walls because it's been pretty popular. So just simply hit this button, enter your email and boom, once you hit that, then uh, the free download will be in your inbox. So within about five seconds, the beat has showed up. So now I'm going to download the file. And again, this is a free for nonprofit just so you could get started and record your song and actually make sure that you got something good. I make sure to, there is a tag in here, but I put it very quiet so it doesn't distract you. Uh, so what you wanna do is pull this project in. And then to be able to edit this, we're gonna need to know the tempo. So if you head over back to ryanybeats.com and uh, you don't even have to click on the beat, we see that the BPM for the beat walls is at 150 beats per minute. So what we'll do is we'll, we're gonna go into a empty project. So. Uh, you're going to need a program to do this. Now, you can even use a free program like GarageBand, which comes free on any Mac. And then there are also free programs for PC. So if you don't have a computer, then again, you can't do much right now. So the first thing you got to do is get a computer. But once you get a computer, then you could just head to Google and type in free DAW or free digital audio workstation. Now in this video, I'm going to be using Logic Pro X, but what I'm gonna show you here will work fine in any DAW. So the first thing we're gonna do, uh, sometimes you'll notice that the beat doesn't start on the bar, but it starts on the quarter bar. So just to keep it simple, we'll have it start on an actual bar. And then, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to edit the song structure. So many people would like the final chorus extended. So in this video, I'm just going to assume that somebody wants the chorus extended at the end, twice as long. So the first thing you wanna do is identify the location which you want extended. So the chorus starts right about here. So what we'll do is we're gonna edit and we're gonna split this. So you can even just go up to edit and split. If you don't know the uh, playhead, yeah, that works. And then the chorus ends right here, boom. So we found the beginning and end of the chorus and we split it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate this. The easiest way to do that would probably be to click on the section and then go up to edit, copy, and then paste. Make sure you paste it at the right location at the end. Now we have doubled it. And then we could actually continue this to just include the ending as well. So now it'll be twice as long and it will still have the same ending as before. Now when editing the structure, one thing you wanna make sure of is that there are no pops in the transition. So let's listen to this and I'll show you how to edit any pops as well. So that wasn't too bad, but if there was a pop, the two things that you could do is first zoom in and make sure that the lines line up. So you'll notice that this file on the right, these two lines right here and right here don't quite line up with this line right here and this line right here. So what you would do is edit this and try to find a location where these two lines connect. So we're getting closer. That seems to be a lot better. So if they connect, you'll definitely find either no pop or a reduction in the pop sound. Now, if there's still any noise, you can use the volume automation to lower the volume during that section. And I like to make sure that it's also quiet a little bit towards the left. Now notice I'm very much zoomed in. As I zoom out, really there's only a little sliver of volume being dropped, but that will, if necessary, remove the pop. It's only necessary though, if you do the first solution, which is lining up those lines. If you do that and there's still a pop sound, then this would be the second thing that I would recommend to do, which is pretty much guaranteed to remove the pop. Uh, if it doesn't, then you just have to move this over to the left a little bit or potentially this to the right. Most likely you're gonna have to move this to the left a little bit further. So that is how you edit the song structure. Now, if we wanted to edit the tempo, 
uh, it's a little bit different in each program. So you might have to go to Google and search how to edit tempo in whatever program you're in or watch a YouTube video about it. So um, what I'll do though is I'll show you how it works in Logic Pro X. Uh, a couple ways you can go about editing the tempo. I just dragged it back to the beginning. Uh, but you can click right here and turn this into polyphonic. And now you'll be able to edit the tempo. So say you want this thing like super fast because you are on drugs. You wanna just, you wanna flow at a million miles a minute, boom. Right, you can slow things down. Right, so now you got complete control over the tempo and then you can also edit the song structure. Now the final thing is the pitch, right? How do we edit the pitch? So there are plugins, for example, and again, whatever program you're in, you might have to look it up, a uh, YouTube video specifically about your program, how to edit the pitch in FL Studio, Ableton, or whatever you're using. But one thing you can do is you can use a pitch shifter. So this is going to allow you to adjust the semitones, which is also like half steps in music. So this would go A, A sharp, B, etc. And the problem with this though is that it works, but it, it seems to diminish the quality in most of the cases. So. Right, so you can hear the hi-hats. It kind of messes up the sound. I mean, it very much does. So one thing, I don't like to use pitch shift. One thing you could do in Logic Pro X is you can go to Customize Control Bar and you can do what I like to do is Verispeed. So this, again, it's more of a math problem. So say if the tempo is at 100, it makes it a lot easier because I can put this up by about 11%, which is approximately two half steps. So now it will still be in key because the problem with this is that it's easy to mess up the song and to put it out of key. The good thing about it though, is that listen to the quality of it. So I can put this up to like 27 or something. Let's see. Oh no, it's because I did speed only. You want to do speed and pitch. So you can change the pitch right here and retain the quality. But the only issue is, is now that the tempo is 100 plus 27%. So now it's at 127. So to find the right tempo, it's kind of a math problem because, you know, for every, you know, about 6% for me is about one half step. Then 11 is another one. Then it goes to about 17. So you kind of got to experiment with it. But doing it this way definitely allows you to retain the quality. Uh, but again, there are different ways to do it. So depending on the program you're in, you're going to have to look at the upsides and the downsides regarding the quality and <clears throat> the actual pitch, tempo, etc. There are definitely more effective ways to do this in other programs and other ways. But overall, what I just showed you is how to download a beat, any beat from the beat store to get started for free and then how to edit your song just so you can have some capabilities. And if you don't have a computer and a digital audio workstation, I don't know what you're doing as an artist. I really think that everybody, even if you have a studio or you have a place to record or if you're signed to a label, whatever the situation is, everybody should have their own place where they can learn the tools and understand the game get some practice recording, get some practice editing. So when you do get in that studio, you understand a little bit more than you did before. You understand what kind of vocal effects can be applied and what kind of edits could be made and just understand the overall possibilities and what your team is doing. So I hope you have found this valuable. Remember, you can head over and download any beats to get started. Uh, we got... 600 700 beats and you can download any of them so whenever you want to write a song don't feel like you know it's all complicated download the beat pull it in you don't really have to do any edits you can just record your song but if you do want to adjust the structure now you know how if you do want to adjust the tempo it's really easy adjusting the pitch is a little bit more complicated but 
definitely having an understanding of these things is a good intro point to be able to edit beats and reap the benefits of having a more customized sound that potentially uh, works better with Shazam and allows more content ID flexibility and less copyright claims. So if you found this video valuable, please shoot me a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, and if you're down to work, let's do it. So I get a lot of messages from artists that say, let's work, you know, they wanna do something. So what I've done is I've made an opportunity for us to work a little bit closer together. So for the next week, any beats that you purchase at ryaneybeats.com, I'm going to offer you free editing. So anything that we mentioned here, speeding up the song, slowing it down, making certain parts longer or shorter, or adjusting the pitch of the song or the beat, I can do that for you. If that sounds cool, then check below. I'm gonna have a link to my beat store, ryaneybeats.com, and you could simply email me at ryane at ryaneybeats.com to get started. Let me know what kind of edit you want. Or if you're unsure, uh, you can ask for my number. We can also talk about it. Uh, I'll try to get a hold of you as soon as I can. And uh, if that sounds good, as long as you pick up the beat this week before the 22nd of April, 2021, uh, then I can make that deal for you. So if that sounds good, pick it up and I hope to talk to you soon.